This is uh, part three of uh, the series of tutorials for building stage two of our uh, shoot the coronavirus game. And as mentioned in part two, where we are right now in the guide is somewhere like this. We have basically built the, um, the game scene, but in the game scene, there's only um, a sky box there's uh we duplicated the directional light let's go there for a second all we got in the game scene let me go to the game scene is a sky box we got two lights the regular one and another one to kind of fill in you know the shadows we got uh the camera the camera rig from the oculus uh we got a ui uh, game object inside which there's a canvas inside which there's a uh, text which is going to play a big part later on it's going to count you know how many viruses are remaining but at present it's just you know like a huge billboard in front of us uh, by the way that event system was brought in when we created the canvas we're not going to need it but there's no reason to delete it either then, then th there was an empty game object called room which we filled up with those this is what we did mostly in um part two of the tutorial six instances of wall all together building like a huge you know game space for the cube and each one of them has a script and this is really what this tutorial is going to be about and the script that's attached to all of them is called wall bounce and one of the things we did in tutorial two is copy the code from an rtf called code for wall.rtf copy all of it and paste it instead of the shell code that was there when the script was created and save so this tutorial will start by going over this is really you know let's call it step number 23 explanation of the tutorial vids uh, explanation of the script in the tutorial vids so let's try to explain how this script works now the whole point of this script is that it's attached to all six walls and it's done and its purpose is to do two things first of all so when viruses are jumping around I want them to bounce off the walls but not just bounce off the walls like a regular physics um, material when a virus touches the wall I want it to come back in a random way in other words I want it to come back not necessarily at the same speed it could be coming back at a different speed preferably even a higher speed I don't want it to come back at the same predictable angle I want it to jump around I want it to look erratic so and by doing so they will constantly move those viruses every time a virus hits the wall it kind of gets like a new life a new burst of random energy the second uh purpose of the wall script is when we shoot um syringes when we shoot like you know vaccines at them if we miss and it hits the wall I want the the, the uh, injectors to disappear so these are the two main things to make the viruses jump around and bounce around in kind of a random way and to make um, missed vaccines you know syringes that are shot um, disappear when they hit the wall and all that time the wall is of course invisible so let's start first thing we're going to check is of course that the main public class has the same name as the script including capitalization and everything then I'm declaring three floats three numbers and I think you can see by their names what they're for random for the x-axis random for the y random for the z and those are going to be used for um randomizing the direction and the rotation of each um of the viruses um, then another float which is called speed factor which is going to be used to see you know to, to control the speed um, then on start it takes speed factor from the application data reminding you that the application data was declared back in the start script here is the speed factor and it's one so it goes hey application data what did you say the speed was it's all based on one which is kind of like you know one meter per second back to the wall bounce uh that's the only thing in the start it just reads the speed factor gets it from the game manager from the start script 
Um, then on update, there's also not, nothing much happening. Actually, as a matter of fact, nothing. I just leave it there just to remind myself that it's there. And almost basically everything else is on collision enter. First of all, it checks what did just collide with me. It's going to check if something with a tag Corona. So we're guessing already that when we build that virus, it's going to be a prefab. It's going to be instantiated. And each instance is going to have the tag Corona. So it checks, hey, I'm the wall. Did was I just got was I hit by a virus? Did something bounce against me? If it did, if the object's tag matches the one that we suggested, which is virus, look at what we're doing. We are uh, uh, generating a random number. Now, what random number in a range between negative speed factor and positive speed factor. In this case, since the speed is one, it's gonna be a random number between negative one and one. Why negative? Because sometimes I want it to go in the opposite direction. In other words, if it was going left when it bounces, maybe I want it to go right when it comes back. It might not, but it's gonna be you know, equally um, plausible for it to get a negative number or a positive number, a, a random number between negative one and positive one. Same thing for Y. Same thing for Z. So after these three lines, we have a random number, you know, that's basically a fraction, 0 0.8, negative 0 0.5, something between negative, uh, uh, negative one and positive one. Then by experimentation, I found that if I got very low numbers, it feels like the viruses are kind of tired. So I'm saying, well, after you got those numbers, if you got something that is bigger than negative 0.7, or in other words, too close to zero, and also smaller than positive 0.7. In other words, it's not extreme enough. I'm giving you an, a very extreme number. In other words, what I'm really limiting it to is numbers that are between 0.7 and one, because it's, if it's any less than that, I'm giving it like a, boom, like a boost. Same thing with a Y, same thing with a Z. So in other words, it's random, but if you picked a number that's too low to my taste on random, I am giving you a higher value. Notice that here I'm giving it a random value that's negative, again, just to kind of mix it up, to make it look unpredictable. By the time we're done, we got a random X, random Y, and a random Z that are either between negative one and positive one, or they're one of these values if by chance they pick the number that's too close to zero, like a, a tiny uh, a fraction. Now that we have those random numbers, I'm saying what hit is the name of the object that hit, which is a virus, because we are saying if what hit has the tag corona. So by now we know that what hit is one of the viruses. So what hit dot game object dot get component constant force. Each one of those viruses is going to have a constant force. Dot relative force, because we wanted to go inside, you know, the space of its parent, which is the room. New vector, random X, random Y, random Z. So but every time a virus hits the wall, it gets a new direction left, right, a new direction up, down, and a new direction Z and every time, every collision is going to be a different random number. So if there's like a hundred of them, it's going to seem like totally bouncing around like, like they're alive, like they have a, a will of, a, of their own or something. Then also in the constant force, not just relative force, but relative torque. Remember, torque is for spinning things around. In this case, I found that uh, using these numbers makes it spin so fast that it's like, you know, that it's dizzying. So I'm dividing it by 20, by 40, and by 30 to have a slightly smaller scale of numbers. Again, I'm not dividing them by the same number to give more like an illusion of, of randomness. So every time a virus hits the wall, it's going to come back at a different X, different Y, different Z, and start spinning in a different direction with a different speed than it did before it hit the wall. And if, if a virus hit the wall, why, why is that the end? Because it's the end of the if that checks if the tag was Corona. 
But what if what hit the wall was not a coronavirus, but one of my missed bullets, my missed injectors? In this case, inside the same, um, it's still an if inside the big if, which is if there's a collision. This time, what if that collision was with a tag injector? If the collision was with a tag injector, by the way, this is... Yeah, it's, I don't know why it's giving me this error, but it's, oh, it's because, look, see my um, quotes are not very nice here. Let me make sure that they're identical. I will fix that in the, um, in the RTF as well. You know what, let me do it right now. I'm going to copy the contents of this, put it in the RTF, save that way. I'm not giving you, you know, bad code. What happened here is that it had those, uh, you know, reverse quotes, which sometimes happen. Um, so if an injector hit the wall, simply destroy that game object. So if it has the tag Corona, bounce it. If it has the tag injector, destroy it. So that way I can keep shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And when they get about 50 meters away from me, they will hit this invisible wall and get destroyed. Later on, we can attach a sound to that or whatever, but I didn't feel that was necessary. So that's it for this script. Again, these are its two main functions. Which brings us back to the instructions. So we just explained how the script works, and that was 23. This is going to be the end of stage two, and this is what you guys are going to have to submit for your lab, and you're going to be testing it. So just like when we build the intro and the loading, we go to File, Build Settings, and we make sure that all three scenes are in the build in the correct order. Because I think that right now, if I go File, Build Settings, only the first two scenes are there from, you know, stage one. So I'm going to drag Corona Game in there. Make sure it's in the right order. Zero, one, two. Remember, the first one is zero, then one, then two. Now I think I'm ready to build, but even before I build, let's read what it says. Uh, try to play in Unity using the B key on the keyboard to simulate a ray trigger, just like we did before. Um, you might have to click with the mouse on the game window to make sure it's in focus. It should take you to the loading scene and the game. Loading must, might be almost instant because so far the game is pretty empty. Now let's see what it says. Again, I'm going to go to the intro. We don't need this anymore. And playing, let me actually even click on the start button, bring it into focus so we can see how you know the beam is supposedly touching it. If I play and it's in contact with it, it'll turn red. And if I click B, that means I want to start the game. This will be like simulating as if I pushed the or pulled the uh, trigger of the left controller. It'll take me to the loading scene but almost instantly, see, like you barely saw the loading. It took me to the game. Why did it take so fast? Because loading took milliseconds because the game is pretty much empty. Believe me, it will take a little longer once the game is full. I'm going to do one more thing before we go back to the instructions. When you play things that use um, Oculus uh, prefabs like the camera in unity without building it you get a message which I want to show you you get this red message that says about something about a null reference and that might scare you know uh, someone to think that we did something wrong we can see it in the console all it means is that unity is saying hey you're telling me I'm on an oculus but I'm not really on an oculus the oculus is missing it's not a real error it's just the lack of uh, ability to test it for, you know, inside Unity as if it was an Oculus. But if you remember something we learned like, you know, last course, an error, I'm still in play mode, is not a real error if you can clear it. If you can clear it, then it's just a warning. It's not really a, an error in um, script. So again, I will test my B. Which seems to think a little bit. 
or it might crash on me. Uh, but while it thinks what to do, I'm going to go back to the instructions and see that we are done with them. Uh, yep, here it is. It played. It take, took me to the game. Stop. Um, the idea is that if, you know, testing in this very limited fashion in Unity works, um, then try to build it to the Oculus. So far, it should take you from the intro to the loading to an empty game scene, no viruses yet. And remember also, not to be discouraged, the first build takes longer. Even though we all did already build it to the Oculus at the end of stage one, as far as its product name in here, in the project settings, I don't see any reason to change it. Mine is called, let's see, my system is slowing down. Uh, Oculus Corona for vid, or, you know, whatever name you got, we're just continuing from what we did in stage one. No need to change the, the name, we're just adding more to it. So at this point, I am uh, stopping this tutorial, and um, the next series of tutorials will be stage three, which is adding the viruses and the injectors that we shoot at them.